Today we're going to be doing a procedure called extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy. Uh, it is a procedure used for stones that are located high in the urinary tract. Um, these stones are generally too big to pass or causing a great deal of pain in trying to pass and we will then use the technology that I'll explain a little bit later to break the stones up. I first want to show you the stones that we're going to be taking care of today. This is an x-ray of the procedure of the patient that we're going to be doing today. Um, this is the spine, this is the patient's right, the patient's left. This is a stent which had been previously placed. A stent is a hollow plastic tube which goes from the bladder, which you can see the curl down here in the bladder, all the way up and this continues up to the kidney. A stent is used to prevent the urinary tract from being obstructed by large stone fragments. Sometimes a stent is necessary uh, during a lithotripsy, as we call this procedure, sometimes it is not. Generally, if there is a large stone greater than about half an inch or so, we will need to place a stent. Otherwise, we can do this procedure without a stent. The stent offers a measure of protection for the patient against having a stone fragment block them up. However, the disadvantage to a stent is that it does cause some discomfort to the patient in the post-operative period. Uh, generally the patient will feel some poking in the bladder area and they will feel some pain in their side when they urinate while they have a stent in. We are going to start treating this stone in the lower part of the right kidney by using extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy. Shockwave lithotripsy creates shock waves outside of the body that are focused onto the stone. As they come through the skin the, the shock wave is coming through in a pattern about this big. As it approaches the level of the stone, it is focused down in a cone where all of the energy is focused directly at the stone. The patient is laying on a table that moves um, up and down, back and forth, and then we adjust it in three dimensions to where the very tip of that cone is centered on the stone. What we see here, using real-time x-ray imaging called fluoroscopy, we are centering the crosshairs on this stone in the lower part of the kidney. And once we're satisfied that we have everything set up um, with the stone in the proper position, we will then begin creating the shock waves. Uh, these will be generated at about 120 a minute, and that's the popping that you can hear right now. This is painful for patients if they are awake, so they do need some form of anesthetic. Uh, generally, we use a spinal anesthetic, which this patient has chosen. This piece of the equipment is the fluoroscopy unit. That's what's generating the x-rays and transferring it to the screen where we can monitor it throughout the procedure here. The shock waves are actually generated in this part of the, the equipment, this is located directly under the stone, and then, then we move the patient up and down to get the stone at the tip of that cone, as I had mentioned. The shock wave is generated by having basically, a, the easiest way to think of it is a giant spark plug underwater. And as a great amount of power is transferred from one side of the spark plug to the other, it creates a um, huge gas bubble where there's a rapid expansion of the water into gas, which happens whenever you heat water. That is transferred out in all directions, but it's caught by a parabolic dish under it, kind of like a satellite dish that then focuses that shock wave back up towards the stone. And that, stone then, that shock wave then breaks the stone up into fragments.